Back in 2013, I demoed the Fostex TH900 MK1 at a hi-fi store, and ever since then it really did solidify my love for wooden headphones, such as the Immutique that I've got around me, or even my custom modded Denon D2000s, which you might be seeing at the background over there. Now here I've got the TH900 MK2 and the TH909. After having spent over seven years reviewing different audio gear, I was very much intrigued to see how these headphones would now compare to more later headphones out there on the market, namely in comparison to the likes of Sennheiser, and furthermore, how these two headphones would compare from the open, well, open back to close back type of design and how this would affect the overall sort of sound signature. Now before getting into this review, if you do have Instagram or Twitter, I'd very much appreciate to follow. Social media links will be over here and also down in the description below. And if you're interested in all electric or hybrid news or reviews, do check out Totally EV. Your support would be equally appreciated. So let's kick things off and talk about what you get in the box. Now both headphones come with a three meter long cable that's terminated by a 6.3 millimeter jack and is connected to the headphones via two prong two pin um, connectors. Now the cable itself is very nice, it feels good, and it doesn't tangle that easily. However, it would have been nice to see Fostex actually including a variety of different cables, such as XLR cables, or even balanced cables, and even 3.5mm jack-ended cables for those people who have a DAC which doesn't have a 6.3mm jack input. I just would have liked a little bit of options over here, and it's a shame that Fostex have kind of kind of skimped out in terms of the um, cable department. Of course, you can buy aftermarket ones, but they will probably set you back quite a substantial amount of money. What I do like, however, is the fact that Fostex have included a headphone stand by default, and therefore the headphone stand not only gives you a place to, well, place your headphones, but it's just nice to see that you don't then have to uh, shop around for an external headphone stand. Now moving on to the headphones themselves, let's talk about those wooden cups. And here I think Fostex still reigns supreme in this domain and still retain one of the best looking wooden cups that you can find. Now this is very much apparent with the 900 MK2. It is, however, cut short, literally, with the 909 because, well, you've got this enclosure which is a metal mesh-like type of design and while it does look good, it just really can't compete with that overall total woody look of the 900 or the 900 MK2 which we've got in front of us over here. Now in comparison to other woody headphones out there, such as let's say the Denon um, D5000s which I've got over here, or even let's say the MUTIQ which also look very nice, I think still the Fostex um, headphones still look the best out of the bunch, and in my opinion are still the best looking headphones out there in terms of their wooden enclosures. Now past the wooden enclosure, we're going to talk about the headband design. Now here, I am pretty disappointed to say the least, because very much like in 2013, and my impressions of the TH900 and the 900 and MK2 that we've got over here. Both headphones do have the same sort of headband design that you'd find on a cheaper headphone, such as the Denon uh, D2000 line. And you can see the results of using it for a prolonged amount of time, that the design of the headband means that it kind of frays over time as you might expect from a set of headphones that use a kind of leatherette or leatherish type of look and design to them. I just wish that Fostex had actually addressed this in their flagship headphones, the 999 and the 900 MK2, and given these headphones a bit more TLC and love by either including a suspender type of design or even having a slightly different headband which would therefore prolong the amount of life on them. If you look online as well, you'll probably see people complaining about the overall headband design because over time, I mean I didn't have the problem, but they can get a bit loose by their joints and therefore kind of fall into pieces, which is not exactly what you want to associate $1,700 or £1,300 headphones with when you are using them for a prolonged amount of time. Now on the plus side, the headband is pretty light and therefore isn't too chunky, and the overall headphones themselves, be it the 909 or the 900 MK2, don't weigh a ton, and unlike its Order Z competitors, I would say the Fostex headphones are very comfortable to wear. This is also due to the fact of the 
stock pads. Now the stock pads are really comfortable and if you wear glasses like myself, you will have no issues wearing these for a long amount of time and not feeling like these headphones have too much of a strong clamp force, which is the thing that I would say that some of its competitors fail in this domain where they feel too, well, too much of a strong clamp force and their pads are just a little bit too cheap. Now if I compare the pads in comparison to let's say Lawton Audio Pads, which are custom pads that you can purchase, they won't be as comfortable or as cushiony soft, but still for stock pads, as far as stock pads go, the Fostex headphones do a fantastic job in this domain. And of course, if you do wish to get a custom pad, you can do so and let's say install the Lawton Audio Pads, for example, that I have on my MUT. Now elsewhere, the top of the headband has got very little padding as you might be accustomed to from the previous line. And the headband adjustment, while it is very easy and just sounds really nice when it comes to clicking it out and in, it is worth bearing in mind that if you do have a small sized head, you might struggle to fit these headphones around your head on the whole because well even on this minimum level and from the top of the headband it might feel a little bit well too long if that makes sense and as a result you might want to look into investing into let's say a suspender headband design which reduces that level and therefore means that you can wear the headphones a little bit more comfortable um, specifically again if you have a small sized head again your mileage may vary in my in my case I had no issues whatsoever but I think I've got a medium medium-sized male head, so it's just worth bearing that all in mind. Now on a final note, I should say that the headphones don't kind of fold in. Um, it's no surprise over here because they're not portable headphones, but it's just worth bearing in mind that they've got a bit of swivel room for you to adjust in terms of your head shape. I will also like to point out, and this is very, very a small point, but the TH900 MK2 doesn't have a right and left indicator on the headband itself. Instead, it's just by the uh, two-pin connector jack. While the TH909 has a small little right and left indicator on the headband, which makes it just a little bit easier to work out which one's right and which one's left. Of course, for experienced users and for those who use it for a long period of time, you will know that the back of the headphones have got a thicker pad, whilst the front of the headphone have got a thinner pad. So therefore, it's pretty obvious to know which one is the back and therefore which one's right and left. But for those people who are not aware, then I just prefer the right and left indicator that's actually showcased on the uh, headband itself. And now let's get onto sound quality. Now what I'm going to do is break it down in terms of awful sound frequencies and also compare these two headphones to some of its competitors, namely from Sennheiser, Audazy and even the Immutik, which are far cheaper alternatives. Now first off, in terms of sub-bass, back in 2013 I was impressed by the level of sub-bass response that my much cheaper Denon headphones could achieve but was still kind of taken away by that low end progression that you get with the TH900. The same could be said about the MK2s where they really do extend very well in that low end tone. Now the TH909 however do also extend very well and this was somewhat surprising to my ears because most open back woody headphones even from the likes of Audacy for example don't sound as meaty sounding at that low end tone in other words in that sub bass frequency they don't produce that low end rumble as much as you would expect now don't get me wrong the Audacy headphones are fantastic let's say the LCD3 for example however on the whole I still think Fostex kind of reigns supreme in this domain giving you that low end sub bass extension that a lot of bass heads or people who like let's say a warm a sound signature will absolutely love, including myself. And I'm just pleased to see that the 909 still retains that sub bass extension. Now in terms of the mid bass, here are where the two headphones kind of differed, very slightly, but when driven over my Chord Ugo 2 DAC, I found that the mid bass just had a little bit more impact on the TH900 MK2, very much like my impressions of the MK1s and how they kind of translated in comparison to let's say the Denon D2000s or even my MUTIQ. They seem just to have that little bit more precision and a lot more emphasis on that mid bass tones. However, the TH909 is a lot more relaxed in this domain. Now, don't get me wrong, in comparison to the likes of, let's say, the Audacy line, or even in comparison to, let's say, the Sennheiser HD820, the closed, oh, sorry, the closed back, open back looking headphones, these headphones will still produce a much more meatier mid bass tone. However, they just aren't on the same level as their closed back 
siblings, which here produce that really that meaty sound that you really love when you come to listening to a wooden headphone. And I was left, not to say disappointed, but left a little bit underwhelmed by the mid-bass response on the TH909. On the plus side, this does have an impact on the lower mids. Here, the lower mids on the TH909 is a lot more forward sounding. Vocals do come out just a little bit more on top. Namely, if you're listening to, let's say, male vocals, you will hear it just come out a little bit more on top with the TH909 versus the 900 MK2. Now here, both headphones really can't compete with, let's say, the likes of the Sennheiser HD800S, which truthfully in this domain, the Sennheiser is truly dominant and still retains the crown of one of the best mid-centric headphones, flagship headphones that you can find out there, at least on a set of dynamic headphones. And it's no surprise here that these headphones both suffered from a bit more of a V-shaped sound signature in terms of their mid-range. But again, the 909 comes out a little bit more on top in comparison to the 900 MK2, whereby it does feel like it has a little bit more boosted mid-range, and it is kind of, not say apparent, but it becomes well, very obvious when you do listen to, let's say, bassy music with vocals on it, because the bass is a little less emphasized on the 909 as comparison to the uh, 900 MK2 and therefore the mids come out more on top on the open back variant. Hopefully that makes sense. Now as for the highs, I think both headphones had a good extension at the top end. Here it does really come into flourishion when you're listening to let's say cymbals or, or, or music that has that sort of high end energy at the top end, let's say if you're listening to EDM music. Here in comparison to, let's say, the likes of the Denon headphones or the Immutique, these headphones just have a lot more clarity at that top end. But in comparison to, again, some of its rivals, I would say namely the Audacy LCD3 or even, let's say, the Sennheiser HD800S or the HD820, the highs just don't compete in terms of giving you that top end smoothness, whereas these headphones sound potentially a little bit sibilant, a little bit harsh to certain people's ears. What I'm trying to say over here is that the highs are very impressive, although they're not quite its forte in comparison to some of other flagship headphones that you can find there out there on the market. Now moving on, we had the sound stage, and here it was the biggest thing that I was wanting to compare with open back versus closed back headphones. And this is because with the Sennheiser HD800S and HD820, there was very much notable differences in, ter in terms of their sound stage performance. Now here, the differences aren't as clear cut as you might expect. You'd think the massive wooden enclosure that's been cut out and replaced by a metal mesh type grill would really impact and really benefit the overall width and depth that you get in the soundstage. Now don't get me wrong, the 909 do sound a little bit more airy than the 900 MK2 purely because that sound has more space to kind of resonate. It doesn't kind of bounce back with the wooden enclosure and go back to your ears. It just feels a bit more airy. But in comparison to the likes of, let's say, the Sennheiser headphones or even the Audacy headphones, they're nowhere near as good in terms of their openness and in terms of their airy nature that you would expect from a set of open back headphones. And in some respects, I actually prefer the overall soundstage of the 900 MK2. This really came apparent when I was listening to songs that had a lot of instruments coming from left and right, and the way that the noise kind of resonated within the wooden cup just came across a lot better in comparison to the TH909, which simply just didn't have that because it had that open back nature. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say over here is that both headphones can't compete with true open back headphones from the likes of Audacy or in comparison to Sennheiser, for example. And in comparison to each other, the differences aren't as noticeable as you might expect. The 909 being a little bit more airy sounding, but on the whole, the overall soundstage, overall tonality that you get from a set of wooden headphones the 900 MK2, in my opinion, comes out on top. And this all leads me on to my verdict. What do I make about the TH909 and the TH900 MK2? Well, unlike the Immutique, which are far cheaper and extremely affordable for those people who want excellent closed-back woody headphones, the Fostex headphones that I've got in front of me over here are just not as affordable. But that's the price you have to pay if you really want true audiophile grade sound and not have much compromises to say the least. Now if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably lean towards the 900 MK2. 
Now, why is that? Well, I think these headphones are not trying to be something that they are not supposed to be designed for. Whereas the TH909 feels like it's trying to compete with the likes of open back headphones, but retaining all the same sorts of sound characteristics of the 900 MK2. Except what really makes the 900 MK2 or closed back woody headphones like the MUT, the Denon D2000s, or other closed back headphones out there on the market, is there a meaty type of sound? And you don't really get that as much in the 909 as you do on the 900 MK2. So, of course, your mileage may vary. You might prefer a bit more mid-centric headphones which still retain the same sort of sound quality pre presence and the sound signature as the Fostex TH900. However, in my opinion, I would still pick the 900 MK2 and still are one of my favorite closed back or woody headphones that you can find there on the market. Are they two and a half times the price worth over my MUTIQ? No, I still don't think that and my impressions, if you read them down in the description below in 2013, even suggested that I, yes, appreciate how good the Fostec headphones are, but in comparison to my old school Denon D2000s, the modded ones, and even the MUT, which I've got around me, the price difference between the two headphones doesn't quite justify the sort of overall sound quality bettering that you're getting. You're getting a marginal improvement in certain domains, and on the whole, there's no doubt about it and there's no argument that the Fostec headphones are the more superior headphones. But for those people who are, not say on a budget, but those people who are conscious about how much money they're spending, like myself, then in this respect, I would still pick the MUT for their sheer value to performance ratio. If you really want the best of the best, I would go for the Fostex TH900 MK2, and potentially, if you want something a bit more mid-centric, consider the 909 as an alternative to the 900 MK2. So that's just my opinions and thoughts about it. I think the Fostec headphones are a fantastic addition to the market and have been for well over a decade. And it's just nice to see that I was able to test them with my own setup and even compare them to the likes of the MUT or other headphones out there on the market. Now, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to see more from the channel. Of course, favor and share as it always helps the channel grow. All right, I've been Chris. Take care and bye-bye.